All right, good evening, my friends. I'm gonna try and get this one done really quickly. Um, I wanna stick to two videos a week. Usually, I was trying for Tuesday and Thursday, but I was traveling yesterday. I was, I was in the Bay for a day trip visiting customers. So here we are, Friday, Friday night, and uh, yeah, let's talk. So the thought across your bow I wanna to put tonight is, so through the lens that I've looked at kind of fitness and movement and mobility and all that stuff, you know, I've noticed this kind of distinct cycle or, uh, of conversation topics, and there are many, but I'm just gonna focus on a specific one. And the one I'm gonna focus on is this idea of quantifying, you know, QQ and movement quality. So, you know, the conversation usually starts off with foundational and fundamental patterns. And everybody's like, oh, yes, but what does your squat look like? What is your, which, which is valid, you know, I mean, FMS screening, I don't, you know, all that, you know, knowing how somebody squats and hinges, all that, that's very valid. And then, of course, the conversation moves to things like, how do you transition? You know, how, how do you do transitions? Do you do tra and it's funny because, uh, you know, I, I noticed this this language about six months ago, and, and, and it's really weird because, you know, I, some of you guys know that I play Capoeira, and I started doing Capoeira in 2002, and, you know, 17 years ago, I was hearing this conversation from my master. It's like, yeah, because uh, Capoeira is great that you, you kick and you do, you do, you do the move, but but how do you get between the move? You know, it's like, and it's like, oh, that's a that's a good point. You know, the really important part is not can you do a move and then another move. It's like, can you like can you move between moves? I guess. So it's interesting to like see this this kind of cycle. You know, like like this cyclical pattern. And this is just how things happen. We know that. So anyway, then after transitions, I've noticed that then then we come to the whole, you know. Can you move in multiple planes? You know, some people call it flow. Some people call it I don't know, triplanar movement, whatever. And and I, and I saw a post uh, that uh, you know of somebody was doing some some you know it was like a I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like a you know the, the, I think the context was yeah, squat's great, but it's a it's a single plane movement, you know, or a hinge is great, it's a single plane movement, but what if you do something like a bed press or something? Yeah, it's a you know now you're moving in different planes, which is fine. I'm not saying it's not valid, um, but. <clears throat> I think what I would argue is that I'm, I'm not sure that. Well, I'm not going to say that. What I'm going to say instead that is when when we come to the idea of how we uh, how we QQ movement, how we quantify qualify movement, which is really the point of like the whole triplanar thing. Is the usually the conversation around it is you know how do we actually quantify or qualify if somebody is a good mover, right? And then you know you see people doing all these crazy silly body weight flows, move because I can, whatever, and you know with no purpose. And, uh, and, and to me, it's, it's like, what, what I think it, it really boils down to is this, um, let, let's call it intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation, right? So, I mean, it's one thing to just say, okay, I'm just gonna take a movement pattern and add rotation to it, and then it's try planar. That's cool, but that's, and, and that's something that you should, tra you should train and people practice, but I, I think the real test of how to qualify that, how to QQ movement is, and, and this is not new, you guys have heard this before, I'm not saying anything groundbreaking here, this is just kind of where I, and I imagine people are gonna start talking about this again in about three months, or I, I don't know, I'm, I'm being snarky, sorry. But to me, I think the idea is how does the body self-organize around an external task, right? And, uh, and it's funny because um, I, I wish I could show you guys this video, maybe I'll try and link it in, in the description or in the comments or something, or I, I don't know how to link externally from it, that's something I'll maybe, maybe I'll put in my bio. But um, I saw this great video of these two pit bulls playing with a balloon. And it's like one pit bull would jump up and hit, hit the balloon with, with, with its nose and it would go flying and then the next one would. And the thing that I noticed is these, I mean, they were getting serious air. Right? But you know, they, it's like they would, they, would, they would hit the balloon and then they would still come down and land like land on their feet. I mean, it was, was cat-like almost, you know? I mean, uh, it was better than cats because I, I, don't, I don't ever see cats being that athletic. So, <clears throat> and I thought, you know, that's really what it is. You know, if you have, you know, I mean, it's one thing to just practice a movement, you know, take your, take your squat and then add, add rotation to it, but that's really all just a closed system. That's your body, you know, there's, there's nothing you're really kind of trying to get to versus, versus, oh my God, okay, there's a thing I have to do that has nothing to do with me. How am I gonna use my body to accomplish this task? And that to me is really, really how, that, that, that to me is, I think, the most honest way to judge good movement, right? And it's interesting because this is something I've carried with me for a long time. I and mean, this is really why I enjoy martial arts. This is why I enjoy dance. This is why I enjoy these things where you actually have to react to somebody else. And you know, that's why I love, you know, Capoeira, Jiu Jitsu, ballroom dancing, um, you know, Filipino martial arts, you know. Uh, you know, and I've said this a bunch of times, you know, it's one thing to kind of do, you know, flow, 
by yourself and, and uh, you know, in, in a gym where, you know, where, where everything is perfect and controlled, but to actually have to move, to, to, to be able to move smoothly and react to something that somebody else is doing, especially, you know, because I mean, you know, I mean, I, th I think another person who's trying to do the thing you're doing but keep you from also doing it, but, but at the same time keep you from doing the thing you're doing, I, th I think that's like the ultimate sort of extrinsic motivator, right? So, I think that's why, you know, I say things like, you know, if you really, really want to, I mean, this is the thing I try to push people through all the time, go take up a, an, an actual skill practice involving another person, involving an kind of an external stimulus, you know, that you have no control over. Or that you, or that your goal is to try and impose some level of control over, and not just impose a level of control over, but also some sort of cohesion with you know. Because when you're playing, you know, I mean, you guys who've done jujitsu or you guys who play couple whatever, you know, it's not it's not all just about imposing. Well, I mean, at some levels it is, but you know, I, you, you probably get further faster if there's some degree of imposing your will, and then some degree of actually kind of going with you know, you know, you know going with the other person's attempts to impose their will, right? And of course, they're doing the same to you. So, yeah, I guess that's my thought for today. You know, I mean, so to, to, to boil it down to, to a, a, a distinct, uh, a distinct point is this idea that, uh, yeah, I, I really say if you're really curious about how well of a performer you are, how good of a mover, or not, and not just mover, like just just how good your performance is, test yourself in, in an arena where you have you know some kind of extrinsic motivation or some kind of you know some kind of goal some kind of extrinsic goal is not set by you you know that's that's why i always tell people to go compete you know that's why that's why i tell people to you know go go do something where you're being judged where you know where, where you have a performance metric it's not set by you it's not like oh well you know i did a i just did some pretty movement or whatever it's you know go go um you know go, go achieve a goal i guess that like that, like i said you have no control over all right um yeah that's what i got for today uh, like I said, hopefully next week we'll try and try try and get stay on a more regular schedule. Got some got, got some other some some new interesting things coming up. Maybe some potential collabs. Um, we'll see how that goes. And again, if it, well, not again because I've never said this, but if anybody wants to wants to hit me up for a collab, I'm down. You know, I'm down to at least talk. Uh, let's do something fun. And uh, yeah, that's what I got. Uh, have a good weekend. Cheers.